In episode 6 of Ahsoka, we are finally brought to the mythical Peridia, where it is discovered that the Peridians that came so long ago to meet with the Night Sisters actually were the Night Sisters themselves. The Dathomirians have been revealed to originate from a separate galaxy entirely. While this explains their strange way and methods of using the Force, it also completely changes one of the most important Star Wars characters in all of the lore, Darth Maul as we now know that his potential was cut down far more significantly than we originally thought. And there is more to the ancient, distant powers of Maul. Some time ago, we had released a holocron all about Maul's full potential, and we talked about what he might have looked like had he retained his legs and specialized in his ancestral magic and their methods of wielding the Force. But now we realize that he would have been far more powerful than even what we theorized in that video. So today, we are going to talk about why Maul has been changed forever, and what is so significant about his new extragalactic heritage. By the way, Acolytes, we are posting news and theories every single day about subjects just like this one. So if you're curious and want to help us theorize about the new content in Ahsoka, be sure to reach out and hit that subscribe button. It is your destiny, as we have seen in the Threads of Fate. The character of Maul has changed, as he now represents a merger between two galaxies. The strange methods of the Night Sisters and the dark ways of the Sith. This also applies to Ventress, but since she wasn't really a Sith to begin with, we're wanting to focus more on Maul, who was identifiably both a Knight Brother of Dathomir and a Sith Assassin. So as far as we know, the new canon is that the Night Sisters hailed from Peridia and traveled to the known galaxy, setting up on Dathomir. Here, they presumably brought themselves together with the Dathomirian Zabrak species that lived there. We are fairly certain that the Zabraks don't actually hail from Peridia like the Night Sisters do. We believe this because there are no Zabraks on Iridonia with an entirely different culture, though it's difficult to say. At this point in time, our assumption is that the Zabraks don't come from Peridia, but the Dathomirian species, which is the species of the Night Sisters, which do. Not only was Maul the direct son of Mother Talzin, the leader of the Night Sisters, but he was trained in the Sith ways by Darth Sidious. His power was to be nearly unrivaled and he served as Sidious' assassin quite well. Though it now becomes quickly apparent that Maul's true talents were wasted as a Sith lackey, and had he not been bisected by Obi-Wan, he would have gone on to achieve terrifying greatness. The son of two galaxies. The son of two different ways to wield the Force. Maul was destined for greatness from the start due to nothing else but his genealogy. With that, it would seem that Maul is gifted in many skills that he himself may not have ever even known he was. One of the strange new things introduced to us in Peridia was the threat of fate used by the Great Mothers, which is a neat reference to our world's Greek and Roman mythology that pertain to the thread of fate used by the Three Fates, otherwise known as the Moire. It is implied that with this thread, the Great Mothers are able to consult the future and see into a certain outcome, or at least look upon things that are happening in the present unlike other Force sensitives who usually are only able to perceive one of many possible outcomes, the Mothers have far more insight into the real future. What more though, is that this gift of advanced precognition seems to have been passed all the way to Maul. Why we say this was he was able to accurately learn of the rise of the Empire, but not only this, he knew that it would specifically come about through Sidious, and Sidious turning Anakin Skywalker to the dark side. Furthermore, Maul was able to perceive that Obi-Wan was protecting Luke on Tatooine. In his dying moments, he guessed that Luke was the chosen one. And while the mistaken theory between Obi-Wan and Yoda at the time was that Luke was the chosen one instead of Anakin, it's extremely impressive that Maul ascertained that Luke at least had something to do with the chosen one prophecy, sensing that the son of Anakin Skywalker was near. Think of it like this, Maul predicted that Anakin's turning point would be the end of the Jedi. Then following this, he was able to locate Obi-Wan using holocrons and Dathomirian secrets. And then on top of it all, before even Vader or Sidious, Maul sensed that Luke Skywalker was the son of the Chosen One, not even knowing prior that Anakin had had children. Maul comes by his ability honestly, as not only did we see the Great Mothers using the sophisticated ritual of the Thread of Fate, but also Mother Talzin who uses her magic to see into the future and present throughout the galaxy, which was how she even led Savage to find Maul in the first place. Beyond this though, 
We also believed that Maul could be gifted in Night Sister magic as well as the dark side of the Force. So far, only the Night Sisters are seen to use this magic, though it is implied that just about anyone can learn this if they learn the proper way to do it. Mother Talzin even traded dark secrets with Palpatine once back in the day when she promised to be his apprentice, a promise that Palpatine would eventually break. While it appears the Night Sisters don't allow the Night Brothers to practice magic, I have no doubt that Maul likely would have gotten Talzin to teach him about it, especially after Grievous wiped out the Night Sisters of Dathomir. But with this, many seem to not know the differences between Night Sister magic and the dark side itself. It is known that the Sith are able to use magic of a different sort. These were the Sith sorcerers of old who were able to perform intricate rituals, conduct experiments using Sith alchemy, and cast deadly spells, enchantments, and hexes. But these sorcerers used the dark side of the Force to accomplish all of this, and it is our understanding that Night Sister magic operates much differently. Magic flows from the ichor that runs through the veins of the planet of Dathomir. Presumably, the same ichor is something that comes from Peridia, or the galaxy of Peridia. For all we know, Dathomir itself could actually be from another galaxy, but everything is a bit hazy now. The point is though, magic indeed flows from the Force, but in a much different method. It is natural, but the Night Sisters believe that their magic can flow from the spirits of Dathomir as well. This includes their worship of the son and daughter of Mortis, whom they refer to as the Fanged God and the Winged Goddess. Though this did not look like Night Sister magic because it did not have the green ichor, leading us to believe that this was not taught to them by the Ones. This makes sense since the Ones hail from a familiar galaxy and not Peridia. Again, as far as we currently are aware. Canon has been turned on its head with the revelation that there are many things that are up in the air right now, but magic operates within the dark side of the Force, but not exclusively. Darth Sidious said that he did not fully understand how the Night Sister magic worked, but he did claim that it was indeed pulling from the dark side. Sidious ignorantly once said that Talzin was making a mistake by not embracing the dark side and by calling the magic what it was, a tool of the dark side. In response though was something important from Talzin. She says that the Night Sisters were free from the strict classifications of the light and the dark, free from the Jedi or the Sith. It is likely that this is why the Night Sisters hated both of these orders, yet had more in common with the Sith Order. It is my understanding that the magic and ichor are indeed an intricate part of the Force, but it is neither light nor dark. It is not even the balance of both, but something else entirely. This completely foreign categorization is the kind of strange aspect of the Force that we have been waiting for. There have been many organizations that do not wield the Force strictly as light or dark. The first that comes to mind are the Shapers of Crow Var from Legends. Strange Force-sensitive creatures completely reject telekinesis or any other forms of traditional, invisible applications of the Force, as they see this as dishonest and cowardly. The Shapers instead manifest the Force in the forms of four elements, the elements of earth, water, wind, and fire, with sub-elements of even lightning. The Crowvar Shapers were deeply connected with nature, but the Jedi believed that they used the dark side. The Crowvar, though, disagreed, and stated that their connection with the natural world gave them their powers, meaning that the Jedi likely were misinformed. The Jedi infamously label just about any facet of the Force that they don't understand as dark side, a massive mistake. But back to Maul, not only did he have his potential severed, I would still like to say that he would have become the first ever Sith Warlock, merging the Sith teachings with Night Sister magics. Maul would have not only been a mere Sith sorcerer, but a powerful dark wizard, wielding the strange energies of a power not fully understood by anybody except the Dathomirians or those from Peridia. I firmly believe that the Sith warlock Maul would undoubtedly surpass the powers of famous Sith sorcerers such as Freed and Nad. With the wild powers of the Night Sisters and the mastery of the dark side from the Sith, it is quite evident why he was selected by Sidious as his successor. It would correct the weakness of the Night Sisters and fortify the darkness within Maul himself, learning to be a mage as well as a fighter. Trained and honed in the combative fires of the Sith, Maul would have no such weaknesses whatsoever. 
we also see that magic seems significantly easier to conjure than Sith sorcery, which means that Maul would be more like Exar Kun but perhaps even on a higher level. Again though, this is only at the full potential and right now is merely hypothetical. With this revelation though, it would make sense that Sidious would have known this information and that Maul was the product of two different galaxies and two aspects of what he considered to be the dark side. If Balin and the Jedi have stories of Peridia, then surely Sidious would have known something about it. As Palpatine infamously spent most of his leisure time researching facets on the Force and possible sources of power, so it is highly likely that he would know of the Night Sister origins, and this would lead into the direct reason why he chose Maul. Before Anakin Skywalker, the literal chosen one, presented himself, perhaps Maul was the best in line as a successor. But what's interesting is something stopped him from this decision, and he relegated Maul to an assassin, perhaps because he feared what Maul could become, and worried that his power would be too much for Sidious to control. This is also why Sidious swiftly went to deal with Maul once he realized his apprentice had survived. This is likely why Sidious ordered Dooku to execute Ventress as well, or at least as a possibility. Someone with both knowledge of the dark side and powers of the Night Sisters cannot be allowed to live, for Sidious notoriously fears a power that he cannot understand. But anyway my friends, we must know your thoughts on this and the fact that Maul apparently is a product of two different galaxies. What do you think would have happened if he had never been severed? And do you think that Maul could have used Night Sister magic? As always my friends, thank you so much for visiting our channel today and may the force be with you always.